All right, I've done a lot of testing of digital pedals over the past couple of days and trying to iron out all the kinks and see how far we can push the technology to get really quiet results. And I'm afraid that as of 2022, almost 2023, there just don't seem to be any truly quiet digital wonder pedals on the market right now. Um, at the end of this video, you'll hear one other contender I checked out just to see if maybe it would do. They all add some level of noise. The MXR Reverb adds a little bit of noise compared to nothing not being in the chain. Uh, when bypassed, um, adds more noise, but not a ton when you engage it. Uh, but the fact that um, uh, when you're playing uh, with the effect on, you don't really hear the noise as much because all the spaces between the notes are filled by the effect. And then it goes away for the most part in bypass mode, but you still have the trails. This is about as good as it seems to get these days. Uh, the Flint, uh, if it's in true bypass non-trails mode, this is the V2 Flint, uh, doesn't add much noise in this mode. Uh, it's a little bit noisier than not having it in the chain at all, but the noise only really comes in when you engage the effect. And again, the effect itself tends to hide that hiss. I don't know that I'd use this on, uh, depends on your recording session. If you're recording, uh, you know, if you're trying to play parts like might find on a on a Sting album, no, it's noisy. If you're doing grunge or indie stuff, uh, it's fine. You know, back in the day, tape hiss hit, hit a lot of things, but without tape hiss, which is brought to us by digital, by the way, digital made everything quiet, so now why I can hear the noise that these digitals bring in. It's frustrating. But anyway, for the client, his purpose is using the Flint by Strymon, this is the V2, for a tremolo and reverb kind of replicating what you might find in an old amp, a lot of times the reverb is always going to be on, and it sounds quite nice for that. Let's give it a little bit more of a spring texture. Adding tremolo as desired. Not really anything used as a special effect, but you know, just the general purpose stuff. And then the uh, MXR is uh, going to be kind of a special effects. And I think two of the settings on here are particularly useful. They're mod setting, which sounds like this. I'll turn off the tremolo. And their pad setting, which if you turn the tone knob up, gives us the shimmer sound that he's looking for. And, uh, you know, that's useful. Uh, a little goes a long way. That might be nice to have an expression pedal hooked up for that, to bring that and the mod in and out. But both of them will do other things as well. There's a lot of overlap aside from the mod and the pad setting. And I think the Strymon's probably uh, a little bit easier to get around with really fast. You know, if you wanted 
more of an 80s thing. Speaking of 80s, I also borrowed this to see how it did as far as noise and whether its shimmer was any good. Because if the shimmer worked fine, it's a kind of a special effect. The MXR costs a lot more than this. You could have sold the MXR. But this thing's noisy at all times. It has spillover mode, always engaged, and that is affecting uh, the noise floor. Other than that, it sounds like what it is. <laughs> Sorry, uh, boss effects just bring out a certain side of me. Um, you know, it's got, uh, that was the mod man, was it modulation? Modulate, not mod man. Sorry, I need new glasses. Modulate, it's got, you know, it's got an iffy spring. It's got a pretty good plate. It's got an okay haul. I think his room's kind of terrible. Might be good for certain sounds. Uh, his dynamic's pretty impressive. As always, depending on your playing taste, it's shimmer is really terrible, in my opinion, and very synthetic. Notice I have the tone rolled almost all the way off on that effect. So there it gets in the realm of the usable, but if the tone's above 10 o'clock, sounds either like a thousand steel drum players who are very, very tiny playing at once, or like uh, something from a Nintendo. Though I could hear Robert Fripp uh, making use of that sound if it were somehow doing everything in quartal harmony. And then it has a built-in delay mode for those who just occasionally need delay. kind of fun playing that through these old pedals and my client won't know what the hell that was but some of you will anyway let me do one other thing while I have a, this all set up just to get out of the realm of the digital pedals for a while all right the other day I was saying I was comparing the version one flint to the version two flint and I was saying that the uh, you can really hear that the minimum speed and maximum intensity had increased and decreased well uh, minimum speed had decreased, maximum intensity had increased on the version 2. But in that comparison, I had the, this set to 61 and this set to 63. So let's let's revisit that real fast from work fair comparison. Then I'll show you a little bit of a difference in the, uh, in the reverb that I've noticed. It's not the kind of thing that makes or breaks uh, either one, but it's one thing where I can hear a difference in the reverb implementation on V2 versus V1. But for the tremolo, here is max intensity, slowest speed, 61 harmonic. So 
So it's quite a difference. And in use, um, you know, it makes this feel a little chewier. And uh, you can do things you can't quite do with this. And this one's a more responsive unit overall. Um, so. It's hard to describe, uh, I mean, you can hear it or you can't, but this has got more interest to what the waveform is actually doing to the note. Uh, this one seems to be attenuating and then raising the level back up by at the same uh, with the same envelope more like a sine wave this one's doing more of an abrupt off than a slow fade on at least to my ear and then the 65 Sometimes it's subtle, but this one just always seems to sound a little bit better. So they've, they've done some nice work on this. The reverb difference is more subtle, unless you have the reverb dialed up quite a bit. But what I'm hearing is that there is more of a delay element apparent in the reverb uh, decay envelope on the V1, where I can hear individual pulses. So. I'm hearing a pop, 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 pop in the background. And on this one, I don't hear that. It's all more homogenized. It's a little bit brighter, too. They both sound really good. I'm not, you know, I, this is mine. I own the version one. And based on what I'm hearing, I'm not gonna sell this and spend all the money to get a version two. But it's nice to know that they have been innovating in all other aspects. I just wish they bring down that noise floor even more. This one is quieter than this one in that this one, if you engage the buffer to get to, get to trails, you always have hiss. This one, um, this, the quietest is bypassed without trails. Uh, then uh, true bypass with trails is a little bit noisy. Buffered with trails is the noisiest position on this. So it's, it's better in that regard than the V1, but it's not quiet. And I wish it were quiet.